We are at a beautiful patch and a beautiful stand of Ceanothus fendleri, or red root, also called uh, mountain lilac. Some names for some of the other red roots are New Jersey tea. So back during the Revolutionary War days, when, you know, the Boston Harbor thing and, and throwing the tea overboard and boycotting, well, when they got rid of the black tea, they were all of a sudden like, oh my God, what are we going to drink? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like that's what the colonists were saying. It's like we just threw all the black tea in the freaking harbor. And we like, we want that in the morning, right? You know, it's like, it's like. So they replaced the black tea with the leaves of Ceanothus americana, the New England red root. But when you take the, the leaves of this Ceanothus and roast them, or you dry them, and mostly you got to dry them, and then you roast them in a, like a skillet, and, and you end up with like a, a rubose or a semi-black tea, like really lovely tea to drink. So I, I suggest, you know, as you're harvesting and digging up an entire red root shrub for the root, it's the root that we're after as the medicine, that you also put some of the leaf in a bag, dry it, and now you have a beautiful tea to drink. Wherever you want a medium astringent, uh, the leaf tea could be used medicinally. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I, there's plenty of astringents out in our in our in our materia medicas. There, you know, in our in our plant repertoire, there's plenty of astringents out there. But um, you could use this one as a nice medicinal astringent. It could be actually the dry leaf could be put into salves if you want your salve to be a little bit more tightening, a little bit more drawing, a little bit more shrinking. Astringents do that, you know, and, and, you know, you've heard me talk about the classification from light astringents like rose petals, medium astringents like mesquite leaf or red root, and heavy astringents like oak bark or oak leaves. And in that light, medium, and heavy categorization is how we tend to choose to use them in the body. Sometimes we need a heavy astringent because our nose is bleeding, and so oak oak will shrink and tighten the hemorrhaging of the capillaries quickly and fast. But oak is something you wouldn't use on a long-term basis internally. So the he more heavier the stringent it is, the, the shorter period of time that we can use it in the body without over-tightening and without over-tanning or without over-astringentizing parts of our tissue. Light astringents like rose petals you could do every day on your skin. You could drink every day in a tea because they don't tighten so much that they cause you to um, get thrown out of balance by over astringency. Your body recovers from rose petals being you know, consumed or rose petals touching your mucous membranes or being on your skin. Your body gets slightly tight for a moment and boom, your body responds and goes back to normal quickly with a light from a light astringent. So to answer your question, yeah, I mean, it's just like it's not... Um, you know, it's kind of like a medium astringent. What we're after is the root. Pass this around, and I want you to look at the red, pinkish root part. This is, you know, this fendleri. And what, when we're going to harvest the root, I often will, will make my tincture from like an inch above, you know, just kind of from an inch above the root part down, chop all this up, make a fresh root extract. And the redder the better is our general rule of thumb. So, but it's not to mean that you discard any that's pink, or even maybe there's, you don't see any traces of pink or red. There's plenty of constituents in there. You know, so, and, and so if you're, I would suggest that instead of taking a giant shrub, you go to a place where there are a lot of little shrubs and you kind of thin out. You know, kind of look at the ones that are kind of thriving, the bigger ones, and go in there and take one or two out of the middle so they have some room. And that way, if you take a half dozen little ones, you're more likely to get a more representation of a good Ceanothus extract than concentrating on taking one huge shrub. You dig it up, 
and you look and like, wow, that root is not as red as the one I got two years ago. It's actually light pink. So what I've decided is that it's better to get a lot of little small ones. You're going to get a nicer medicine, a more representation of the true red root medicine than, than putting all your eggs in one basket and taking one big root from one big shrub, which could cost you two hours of digging, you know, I mean, to try to excavate one giant, one of these giant shrubs. So just go into an area like right here where you guys are sitting, there's like half dozen shrubs, little shrubs, and you just kind of take one or two of them out of that zone, you know, and... Uh, and that way, if you've got, you know, half dozen shrubs or three or four shrubs, that you, little shrubs like this size that you've dug for yourself, and you chop it up, you're going to get a nice red root extract. The redder, the better um, of the root color is kind of like the general. But I have found that it's not an absolute. It doesn't mean you have a, that significant of a lesser medicine. But that red is kind of like the cyanothin and, and the various constituents that are like what we're after. So pass this around and you get an idea of, this is a nice one, Paul. This is like, I'd be happy with this. It's got a nice pink color. I'm going to like use everything from here on down and chop it up. Of course, I'm going to take off the dead uh, dead rotten stem parts of this. And you want to chop it up while it's fresh. First and foremost, the only really, the best way to use this is a fresh root extract. You know, it's kind of like, dry for tea or dry for extract later yeah it's applicable it's good it has uses but really you know like if you're after the menthol salicylates which are the aspirin like compounds found in a lot of the red roots if you're after the the lymphatic aspects the redder the better the you know and the menthol salicylates you'll know like if you scratch the root and you can smell wintergreen then you know you've got some of the menthol salicylates or the aspirin-like compounds, which means it's going to be a more of an anti-inflammatory. So some of the species um, really smell like wintergreen. The root. the root and the leaf and the stem, and, and, and uh, it just depends. Some of them are so <coughs> wintergreen smelling, and you know that's going to be a nice anti-inflammatory. It's really nice. And then you also get the lymphatic uh, constituents, a classic of the classic red root. When we wild craft up on these mountains and slopes, make sure you cover your holes. Make sure you take your time. Um, make sure you try to go after the plant that you're going after. Make sure you know what you're digging. Uh, if, if, as a group, you know, it's like, hey, is this red root? You know, don't be afraid to ask your neighbor or ask the person standing next to you to confirm that or call me over. Cover your holes. Make sure you know what you're digging. You don't dig up things that aren't red root. It actually helps to do something that Michael first theorized. Some science is starting to back up. But the fact is that, you know, when we get sick, when we get ill, when we get congested, when we get inflamed, when we get boggy, slowed down events taking place in our body, our cell membranes lose an electrical charge and somewhere on one side of the wall or the other of the membrane wall, the charge gets weakened. And fluids, because, you know, like, simplistically, fluids move through the membranes by electrical charges, positive and negative, back and forth, waste out, nutrients in. F movement in the body is caused by electricity. Movement in the body is an electrical event. When we get sick, when we get infectious diseases, when we get bacterial or viral infections, our electrical charges with, within and on and around the membranes, the cell membranes, lose and become weak. And thus we build up congestion. It, I, think it's, I think it's like one of the major contributing factors to chronic inflammatory problems is the loss of the electrical charge on the membrane walls. When you get bacterial or viral infections, you definitely do that. Your lymph system swells up, your lymphatic system swells up, and congestion and uh, enlargement of the lymph glands takes place. It's most likely occurring because of the loss of electrical charges. Red root recharges the membranes, allowing fluids to move out and in back as they would be normal you know a normal electrical like a recharging of the of the of the you know of the
principles of electrical movement on the membrane level and on the cellular level, the charges are reestablished, congestion can now get out, and nutrients can get in, you've got movement again, and if this is not one of the most profound events for creating healing in the body, I don't know what is, you know, I mean, it is profound that this plant will literally charge, recharge your membranes in some fashion to allow fluid movement to take place on the tiniest and the the tiniest ends of the capillary highway, you know, and uh, this is phenomenal. That's why red root can accompany, especially in our culture and in many circumstances, why red root can truly accompany almost any formulas. We are lymphatically impaired, our, you know, between electromagnetic fields, the food we eat, stress, um, GMOs, you know, just, you know, pharmaceutical drugs, you know, recreational drugs, overeating here, chlorinated water there, on and on and on and on and on and on and on. There's a thousand reasons, thousand reasons why we lose the electrical charge in our body and become lymphatically congested, thus going into more chronic inflammatory states, thus really setting the stage for diseases and illnesses to not get be pushed out of the body by our normal pursuit of homeostasis or balance, you know, it's just like our body can't keep up with this electrical charge loss. I mean, the, the dosage range of red root is anywhere from 10 to 90 drops up to five times a day. It's a fairly safe plant and you can take a lot of it if you want to really create a lot of movement and you want to get a lot of lymphatic congestion out. This is a plant that plays well with tonsillitis. This is a plant that plays well with fibrocystic breast disease. Uh, any lymphatic congestion in the body. Um, people who have had chronic long-term infections, okay, um, they're lymphatically impaired. You know, they really need to probably have something that goes in in conjunction with physical movement, in conjunction with, say, uh, dietary, new dietary movement. They also need a revamping of the cell membranes through the use of red root so that their lymph system can get unclogged and uncongested. People who have had chronic illnesses, you know, Epstein-Barr viruses, any of the, vi any of the virals, any of the uh, uh, chronic fatigue syndromes, any of the um, Lyme disease, any of the chronic illnesses, that take our, that, that like, this is their patterns of illness. They never recover. They never get better. They just like go from acute to subacute. Of like chronic illnesses are interesting because chronic illnesses often like, you get familiar and, and live within a pattern that is not, you're not well. You're subacute. And there's some reasons why you're subacute. Maybe, I mean, you need a revamping of the lymph system. Maybe like, you know, some serious, happiness changes, maybe some serious dietary changes, and their environmental or geographical location changes. But people get used to living subacute, chronically ill for long periods of time. Never having a threshold or a bar to measure. They don't remember when, what it felt like anymore to be, um, to be well. They live in the world, the band, the, the world of subacute illness. And then they, then they stress themselves out, and boom, they get really sick. Mm -hmm. And then they recover. But they always say, like, I don't, you know, I'm doing better, but, you know, I still know something's not right. Red root is a great plant for this. This is a great plant to lay a foundation in many respects for chronic illnesses that never seem to have gone away. But they just subside until you stress yourself out again, and then they come back acute. But Monza will be the main herb. Your two side herbs will be Ocotillo and Red Root. Okay. Mons is the main herb. A great immunostimulant. Great anti-inflammatory. Paving the way for Ocotillo and Red Root to really get more lymphatic movement happening. Driven by fresh ginger root. Which is the ultimate circulatory plant. This is an amazing formula. It is that simple. So if you can find a little key, a little tool that decreases the inflammation, improves the lymph system, and now you throw in the recommendation of a couple glasses more water a day, you will be amazed. People will sleep better, their skin will clear up, they'll have better bowel movements, better digestion, uh, hemorrhoids decrease, sexual appetite or sexual desire will return. You know, women will get juicier, men will get harder, 
You know, I mean, it's like their, their, their body will be less stuck, blocked, and stagnant, and, and basically they will return to homeostasis so much quicker from chronic debilitated illnesses that a lot of people don't even know that they carry because they just assume this is the way it is. You know, red root is one of the most important medicine plants in my materia medica. It is number three. Monza's number one. And number two will vary from day to day. <laughs> you know. But seriously, red root is in the top three for me. Ain't no doubt about it. Red root should accompany any bacterial formula. Strep and staph formulas, MRSA, uh, flesh eating staph, tonsillitis, chronic sinus infections. Red root should always accompany the big guns or the antimicrobial plants because you need to lay the foundation for the waste to get out. And, and guaranteed, if somebody's been dealing with a bacterial infection for weeks and weeks on and they have a lot of cellular buildup that is lymphatically congesting and it needs to go before they really truly can get healed and get, get you know, get getting returned to homeostasis or balance. So uh, red root should always accompany these formulas. Ha 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 